And number three, we're going to come to prayer. God is preparing you for the person He is preparing for you. God is preparing you for the person He is preparing for you. So Adam comes to God. They've had a great relationship. Adam has had a job. Adam has um, named the animals. Adam was looking for a spouse. He couldn't find anyone and he refused to settle for an animal for God to fix. He comes to God and he says, God, I, you know, I can't find anybody, but God, could you, could you help me with that? And God says, yeah, I have a, this amazing thing that I want to uh, give you an, a solution for. And Adam's like, dude, let's do it. What is the Christian mingle ready to single or Christian single ready to mingle.com? Sign me up, Lord. And, and God gave him this, like, he puts him to sleep, gives like this Anastasia, an, an, uh, Anastasia. God actually gives him an Anastasia. He just puts him to sleep and while Adam was sleeping, I want you to see this. Adam is sleeping and you would think God is working on his wife. In fact, God was working on Adam, not on his wife. And while he was working on Adam, somehow his wife came along. See this deal where people say, I'm just waiting on God. God is working on somebody. Actually, the only God, the only way God's gonna bring someone that he's been working on is if while you're waiting he's working on you. God is preparing you for someone he's preparing for you. Somebody say amen. In Psalm 90 it says this, is that our years on this earth are 70 years. 70 years is life on this earth and anything above 70 is bonus. So if you listen to your parents, if you were eating your broccolis, if you were not eating a lot of sugar, if you were not taking a lot of Red Bulls, God says, you know what, you're probably going to live up to 80. But like if you were messing around really bad with your parents, you know, eating, not eating your green, uh, green vegetables and just drinking a lot of sugar and all this stuff, God's like 70 is going to be the top. Now, do, do the math. Let's do the math. How many years are you as a teenager? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. How many? Seven. How many? Seven. What is seven out of 70? Seven. Come on, let's, I know the school is over. <laughs> so seven out of seven is what? Ten, what? Ten percent. Watch this. Your teenage years are the ten percent of your life. Your teenage years are your ties to God. God wants you to give your teenage years the same way as you give tithe, completely to God. Your teenage years have to be given to God the same way your tithe is given to God. If you keep your teenage years for dating, fornicating, just plotting on just for yourself, it's the same thing as you're taking your tithe and you're not giving it to God but you're going to watch Spider-Man. God wants us to take our tithe and to give it to Him. Why? Because so that the rest of the 90% will be blessed. God wants us to take our teenage years and give them 100% to God. Why? So that the rest of the 60 or 70 years will be blessed by Him. Can somebody say Amen? Your teenage years are a tithe to God. So watch this. God comes to Adam and God puts him to sleep. And while Adam is sleeping, he's under uh, this thing. God is working on him like a doctor. I had two eye surgeries. And in both of the times when I had eye surgery, the doctor was not working on me until he put me to sleep. When he put me to sleep, he didn't kill me. When he put me to sleep, I was in a coma, but I was knocked out. I don't remember anything that was happening. The only thing I remember is I woke up hours later, it felt like an eternity. I woke up hours later and I, like, I opened my eyes and I felt like something was different about me now. It was, not, it was not the same thing and I found out that the surgery was over. See, when you're a teenager, God wants to put you to a sexual sleep where you close your eyes and God starts working on you. There are some things God will never be able to work on you until you're sexually asleep. What does that mean sexually asleep? You stop looking for somebody to date. You stop looking for somebody to love you. You stop looking. As long as there is a teen attached to your age, God wants you to go to sleep. Another reason God wants you to sleep. Why do you sleep at night? Why do you rest at night? To recharge. Why? So when you wake up, why? So you can have energy for what? For the day. So when you wake up, you can have energy for? The day. What if I would tell you, God wants you as a teenager to be sexually asleep. So when it's your time to get married, you can have energy for your marriage. What if I would tell you, 
God wants you to say all of your kisses and all of your hangouts and all of your roses and all of your ah oh, you're so sweet you're so fine you're so great what if I would tell you God wants you to save all of that and not throw that away but to say hey why don't you date your mate instead of date somebody in high school why don't you have your best dating romance and all of that in your marriage instead of having it in high school with people whose names you will never remember when you get married and then when you get married you and your spouse will be like mm, grumpy old not fun not exciting why but the days in high school the party time oh that was fun because you were awake at night and now you're sleeping during the day many marriages don't date couples they get married and their marriage is like an arrangement their marriage there's no fun there there's no excitement there there's no guys no longer open the doors they don't bring flowers there there's none of that you know where all of that exists in high school with people whose names you don't remember and the person you gave your heart to the person that you said I'm, I'm the, you are that for me that person gets nothing why does that person gets nothing because the night time was supposed to be a time where you recharge for the day for your soulmate for the person you're gonna spend the rest of your life the problem is most of us during the night which is our teenage years we go party we go having fun and then when we get married we go uh, uh, uh. oh that's you still married to you okay oh man my life is boring you're boring and you're kind of ugly you gain some pounds our life sucks we don't we go on a date why we can't afford to and, and, all this stuff. and you're looking you're like man i did not marry for that why does that happen in our generation why is the old romantic couples are in high school in college and when they get married it's all dull predictable boring could it be that the marriage is supposed to have energy but we wasted it on teenage years with people we will never ever spend our life with Rick Warren said this he said if there will be more courting in our marriages less of our marriages will be in courts can I challenge you with something right now some of you are here today it's 10 p.m. in your life and I'm telling you go to sleep why because you have a day coming there's somebody God is bringing into your life and God wants you to be prepared for them God wants you to be like energized for them God wants you to have the best the best the best stuff not just before the wedding after the wedding continuing all until you are retired God wants you to have that and God wants you to save not only your body God wants you to postpone stuff for your marriage so that your marriage is fun your marriage is exciting but many people here today sad to say your marriage will have to run on caffeine and Red Bull because right now you're awakened one time I went to a summer camp not gonna mention which youth group and uh, they placed me with with the kids where the kids were sleeping the kids were sleeping above on the floor so I was on the first floor me and my wife and the kids were on the second floor at night we're going to sleep at 11 o'clock and I hear this so I thought like an earthquake happened grab my wife's hand I was like honey are you okay she's like yeah I'm fine again and so I to the point it got so loud so bad and it's like midnight I got out of the bed and then I went to look for some volunteers or some people I was like hey guys could you figure out if there is like an a th like some nuclear weapon that's been dismantled upstairs because I'm like I'm dying over there below I feel like they're gonna break through the roof like the guy who was paralyzed in the Bible they broke him through I feel like that's exactly what's gonna happen turns out there were teenage boys who decided to turn bunk beds into soccer goals moved the bunk beds and played soccer at midnight and somehow some way without lights bunk bed fell now I don't know how they survived that so I guess when that boom that's when the bunk bed fed fell they still continue to play soccer without lights I'm like I am amazed at the amount of energy they had but see nobody is like God you don't have energy for 24 hours you only have energy for 12 and next morning do you know how I knew which guys play soccer <laughs> it's the guys who struggle to pay attention <laughs> 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 
and I knew right away I was like, those are the guys and you know what I guessed it not prophetically I was like were well, you guys the ones I was like do you know how I know that because you're yawning and I always tell people this the night is supposed to be a time not when you play soccer in your bedroom but when you sleep and rest so that during the day you can be excited you can be passionate with one spouse not love a thousand different women but I love the same woman a thousand different ways and for that to happen you got to be rested and you got to be recharged somebody say amen somebody say amen God wants you to get sexual sleep some of you here today it's not your time to get married it's not your time to date when are you ready to date when you don't need to secondly we know when you're ready to date when you're ready for marriage so let me ask you a question with the next 12 months are you ready for marriage is marriage an option with the next 12 months okay most of you going like this you just answered if you're ready for dating if you are dating without the intent of getting married it's the same thing as going to the mall without money you're either going to leave unsatisfied or you're going to take something that's not yours dating is not for fun what's for fun is hiding hiking badger dating is not for fun what's for fun is going to life group dating is not for fun what's for fun is to learn how to minister learn how to start a business that's fun learn how to fix a car learn how to get a car pay off the car get a job that is for fun get a, get some friends that's fun we don't date for fun that's involves somebody's heart and emotions dating it has an intent and that intent has to lead to marriage and if marriage is not an option dating is not an option either so I just want to encourage you until that time until dating becomes an option can I give you one suggestion go to sleep well, how do you go to sleep oh it's very simple you turn off the distractions in your bed right you turn off the notifications on your phone and secondly you actually go to bed and then you close your eyes that means you turn off the distractions around you if somebody's distracting you cut them off from your life go into bed meaning you develop an intimacy with God and then you willfully purposely choose to close your eyes meaning you come to church for God not for him her and them that means you stop having personal relationships with someone who is not your spouse as though you're dating them as a young lady learn to talk to guys the same way as you would talk to guys if you would be married right now girls who go around talking to all the boys why because I'm single you're developing a habit that will still continue after you get married God doesn't want you to do that Bible says blessed is the man who finds a wife it doesn't say blessed is the man who finds a woman I mean she was acting like a wife before she was a wife she wasn't talking to anything that moves she was already keeping herself meaning she, she already had her guys uh, eyes closed same thing with guys that means snapchatting direct messaging you know sending all kinds of photos that are completely explicit having very explicit conversations spending one-on-one -on -one time on the top of the mountain let me prophesy and pray for you all that nonsense has to stop go to sleep Sancha go to sleep and what if right now you went to sleep and you realize you know what this good-looking guy woke you up he sends you a photo and he said he likes you and you realize you just woke up it's the same thing what you do if at three in the morning you wake up you know you look it's like you know it's three o'clock in the morning you say ah, I woke up I'm just gonna stay awake no 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 you say you know what I'm gonna go back to sleep if you woke up already maybe you had a sexual relationship maybe you were involved in emotionally and you realize you know it's not your time can I ask you right now something it's three o'clock in the morning you still have so much sleep to do there's a day that's waiting for you there's an awesome marriage there's an awesome husband there's an awesome wife there's an awesome destiny that's waiting you don't need to jeopardize it so you can live it on the Red Bull go back to sleep until the day comes into your life and trust me it will it will it came into my life it will come into your life there will be that day I remember